Under the shadow of the Rock of Cashel, in the heart of County Tipperary, lies the setting for a story of epic proportions. It was here inside the world-renowned Bally Doyle stables that a fairy tale was to be realised. But long before Aidan O'Brien got to work his magic on Easter Brack, it was a bright and affable young man called John Durkin who first saw the potential of what was to become a legend. John Durkin is my son-in-law and um, he was going to start training in Newmarket. And he told me that there was an exciting prospect for hurdling in John Godson's where he was assistant trainer at the time. And um, said he'd like to get him. Told me he had some clients, you know, that he thought would probably buy him. And I was delighted for him. Um, then uh, a week or two later, this horse was going to the sales in July, and a week or two after he'd spoken to me about him first, he, um, he told me that his, the clients he had in mind had decided not to go ahead with the purchase. So he was disappointed and he said to me, you know, really love to have the horse. And I asked him, I drilled him about him and he thought he was, he really thought he was nailed on to win one of the novice hurdles at Cheltenham. So now, well I said, John, you know what, maybe I'll buy myself or maybe we get some partners or whatever, we'll do something, try and get the horse for him anyway. And um, at the time, JP had all his, more or less all his horses trained in Ireland. And I didn't know whether he wanted to have a horse in Newmarket, of all places, you know. Um, but anyway, one day I mentioned it to him. I said that um, there was this exciting horse and uh, if he'd like to, to have him. And he seemed interested and we went ahead and bought him. So he went to the sales in July. And, you know, the horse had plenty of faults. He wasn't a perfect specimen, but very active and full of quality and knowing what we knew about him. Closely with Easter break and uh, he suggested him to Timmy Hyde and Timmy Hyde relayed the message to me um, at the time Tim or he still does buys all my jumping horses all my horses period and Tim told me that going to the sale that he had an order from John to buy one horse that uh, he was just confirming with me that uh, I was aware of it and uh, he said, well, John thinks a bit of this horse. He said he's working with him and thinks he could be a real Sun Alliance type horse and that he had a lot of class. And so I thought about it for a while. I said, well, Timmy, if perhaps if John had liked to train the horse for me and he hasn't got somebody for the horse, uh, you know, maybe you should uh, try and buy him for me if you can. So thanks to Timmy Hyde and John Dorkin, I'm the lucky owner. John had planned to train the horse in England. Uh, then when he met with his illness, which we didn't know how serious it was at the time, John, uh, Timmy uh, kept the horse. He uh, had him gilded there, and uh, uh, he was at Camus with Tim Hyde. And Tim, John suggested maybe that he should go into training. So... I asked her, we asked John who should look after him while he was um, getting uh, treated and uh, look after him for John to train the following season and he expressed a wish that he'd like Aidan O'Brien to train him. So I've got to thank him for that also. As John was recuperating in hospital, his wife Carol Hyde knew that although Aidan O'Brien had taken over the training duties, news of Isterbrack's success was still something special for her husband. Even when John was in hospital when the horse won the Sun Alliance um, at Cheltenham, he was he just couldn't believe it that you know, he said it from the first day to Aidan when the horse went to Bally Doyle that um he believed the horse would win at the Sun Alliance at Cheltenham. And the master of Bally Doyle could also see the quality of the horse he'd been given. Well, John said straight away that he was a very good horse and he thought that he was a horse for Cheltenham and he, had to, like, he thought that he was going to be a Sun Alliance.